How's it going, Bat Family? Welcome to what is a very important news update for the Batman 2022. And that is because somebody may have let a few, a few things slip out of some test screenings from Warner Brothers for the Batman movie. And as some of you may be familiar, test screenings are a thing for movies, but obviously you sign an NDA and you're not meant to say too much. Now, you may, and a lot of you may already know what I'm talking about, and we are about to dissect the living crap out of the details we get out of the said person who saw the test screening for the Batman, but do not worry, there is no spoilers in this. Like, I even though they did give out details, it's kind of ambiguous, well, uh, you know, responses from seeing the Batman in a test screening. So, you get the vibes of what Bruce is like as Pattinson, some slight details like, oh, narration and things like that, monologue and whatnot, but th those are the kind of vibes I'm giving you just right off the bat, so some of you don't freak out and quit off the video thinking that this is going to spoil every minuscule detail. Now, before we get into these details, credibility. So, this is coming from Blu-ray Angel. Now, some of you may know this guy from the very, very famous video that he had reacting to the Batman trailer. He had one of the most iconic reactions that I feel like like encapsulated or just embodied, personified the, the, the very feeling that a lot of us fans felt when we were watching Matt Reeves' vision for his movie at DC Fandom last year. Now, Blu-ray Angel, I don't know too much about him personally other than he is being endorsed by uh, many, very many people that I respect like other content creators. He himself, from what I've seen around the sphere of social media throughout the time that DC Fandom dropped, seems like a very, very positive guy. Like, it, it, there's just no reason for him to, like, literally make this up. Now, this does, just through speaking to a few people and just, like, doing my due diligence, I would say, on Blu-ray Angel, even though this isn't him, he heard it from a very, very trusted friend. It's that situation where, trust me, even without being able to guarantee this as an absolute 100%, you know, guaranteed thing, it has my double thumbs up seal of approval. Of course, though, feel free to to take this with a grain of salt, but these things that are coming out of what his friend told him as a result of the test screening are very legitimate sounding and I know that doesn't do much for credibility but let's just assume that this is credible. He tweeted this out when asked about that. They showed me proof and you'll all have to trust me on that. I would never lie to anyone. I respect you all too much. It meant a lot to me that the person even reached out to me to tell me about the experience so this is what I have for now. So once again, if you respect my credibility in any sense, if I have a low, mid, tier, like whatever Whatever credibility to you, um, I give this my seal of approval. So, with that being said, I am allowing myself to get excited about the details I'm about to read out. So I've skim read most of these, but I wanted to kind of save a little bit of my excitement reaction for actually reading them out to you guys. But what I have seen already is just like... But anyway, let, let's start right at the top. So, exclusive. I know someone who has seen the Batman, a friend of mine, and a really good person. Here's what they told me. Thread, no spoilers. The Batman movie is a horror movie. Very graphic, very dark, very scary. Paul Dano is effing crazy, so effing scary, I loved every second. So far, so okay, okay, you know, you know, it sounds... Sounds like what you would hope to hear uh, coming out of the movie. But the second one, the cut that they saw of the Batman is three hours long. Now, all of this is still somewhat subject to change, of course. Three hours is music to my ears. Uh, test screenings happen, obviously, because they want to gauge like a, a selection of an audience's response. That's the whole point of it, just in case certain things like in the, in the feedback and the reactions don't measure up to maybe what they... You, you get the idea. It's a test screening. So three hours is subject to change but as I said guys th the fact that it's even three hours is music to my ears because it also backs up the evidence and circumstantial evidence I've, I've brought to the table when talking about how Matt Reeves is allowed his creative vision for the Batman movie and despite all those bullshit rumors saying that Warner Brothers is not happy and interfering with it no like trust me like there's even audio of Matt Reeves saying I'm doing this my way and that's absolutely fine if WB doesn't want me to do it their way that's their prerogative their characters but if we're doing it my way we're doing it my way so this this matches up just just wanted to throw that nugget in there Blu-ray Angel goes on to say from their friend that their 
thoughts on Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, I have a million things to say about Catwoman. She's my favorite. Holy shit. Definitely my favorite Catwoman. Now, that's just great to hear about Zoe Kravitz because, you know, I, I think a lot of people are excited for her stepping into the role of Selina. She is very spitting image Selina in many different avenues and iterations from the source material. So, yeah, just more non-spoilery endorsement for a Catwoman that I'm sure a lot of you wanted to hear was, you know, personifying the casting that Matt Reeves saw in Zoe Kravitz as Selina Kyle. So Blu-ray Angel then goes on that their thoughts on Robert Pattinson's Batman voice. His voice was perfect in my opinion. And just even from the trailer when he's like, I'm vengeance. Like I I I I, I love that. I, I'm 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 good with that. But th this is still nothing in my opinion compared to what we're about to get into. Their thoughts on Robert Pattinson's Batman <laughs> Batmobile. Holy effing shit! There <laughs> that that effing Slade. And by the way, um, maybe I'm gonna read this out in a second. This is coming from a person as well who doesn't. Well, that's what they're about to say. I think closing opinion. But there is more after this because there was update tweets that he came out in between with even more stuff that he wanted to get out with extra. Details details that his friend mentioned uh, so closing opinion there's a scene at the end okay now this is you like seriously there's a scene at the end that had that literally had everyone screaming everyone gasped like it was a big no way for everyone i don't give a fuck about batman or dc and even i clenched on to a knee and was shook. It's the biggest mic drop. And I believe with like other replies to other tweets, they are like when asking about post credits or like end things, like this is meant to be the end thing that sets up a sequel. I believe I don't actually have the screenshot here right now. I should have bloody done that. But they say this thing I was just talking about would definitely like trilogy is that quite no there is like people are still wondering about is a trilogy really real like they are setting up and 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 the person who came out of the test screening like seems to think that it is going to be setting up more and more of the rogues gallery of batman and and of course that that that's not news to me because you know the trilogy has been in the works for a while but what is not necessarily news but we've all been wondering about what could be the thing that could set up that second movie and is there an overarching thing that lots of people like to think as Court of Owls, and maybe that will seed and blossom throughout all three movies. I'm not saying that it is the court, but what could this end scene be? Where it's like there's a scene at the end that literally had everyone screaming, everyone gasped, like it was a big no way for everyone. And he, the, the person who came out of this test screen, is like, I don't give a fuck about Batman or DC, and even I clenched onto my knee. It's like the biggest mic drop. Now, I'm sure everyone's going to think, oh man, is there like a situation with the Joker, or is there like a situation with a character who you may have thought something was going along with a certain character the whole time, and it's like, no, really, it was you, or was it like a revelation that the Waynes were like, maybe much deeper rooted in corruption than Bruce originally thought, but to me, that's something you'll find out at some point during the movie, rather than at the end. But, without me rambling too much further because it's not like I'm gonna know what that actually is for a tea. That is a good tease. The biggest mic drop of an ending that even people who are non-DC fans, probably through what even non-DC fans will be watching through the movie, will identify like through what they see in the middle to that end bit with the end scene making sense of what the middle bit was maybe. Even normies are thinking what? So imagine what we're gonna feel and now here's some of the update tweets. Compare Robert Pattinson to other Batman. So Rob is a great Batman, more relatable than the others. Previously, I feel like Batman is all about showing off his money, cars, gadgets, etc. Director slash writer chose to spend their time exploring him as a human slash person with feelings. Now, yet again, not a surprise, especially uh, get going off what Matt Reeves has said before at DC Fandom with how much of a psychological kind of thing this is going into, citing psychological source material references that inspired this movie, such as Batman Ego. You guys know from my ramblings before that we know and have already, and it's just good to hear it reaffirmed anyway, but it's not like they weren't going to do this. They are going deep into the psychology of Bruce. Something that of course we've seen it highlighted in other casted Batmans or Batmen, if you will. However, it hasn't been robustly and in you know um, quintessentially done I think this will be quintessential Bruce Wayne slash Batman in terms of taking that deep dive like it's really going in deep and yet again not a surprise 
but just nice to hear that from the perspective of somebody who doesn't really or maybe is not really as into it as us you know this friend of blu-ray angels who saw this test screening is still getting those vibes you know that even as such a casual consumer by the sounds of it update this movie has a kissing scene i won't say who scratch that kissing scenes make of that of what you will now <clears throat> bruce <clears throat> selena <clears throat> or maybe you're thinking selena and falcone now <laughs> i'm joking but really uh, i don't know i i don't know now obviously i do know to one extent i i think that the kissing scene could be bruce and selena i'm sure this is music to people's ears i don't know how much more to ramble on about it other than obviously i'm sure bruce and selena will have at one point even if they're not sure about each other in their first contact you know in the trailer where it seems like they're gauging each other for the first time i'm sure there's gonna be that impulsive moment where they get to know each other throughout the movie they're kind of working together even more da -de da da and then there'll be that you know ripping off the cowl and the suit kind of situation i am guessing but next up update also are we not gonna talk about how penguin was colin farrell like how i could not tell it was him like at all incredible definitely unrecognizable he has that iconic ugly ass nose and they gave him some crazy deep scars across his mouth an upper lip area which a lot of people are thinking that scar with you know fan theory going around that goes up like that on colin farrell's face like literally what does this resemble a massive smile now uh, if people are gauging and theorizing about maybe some characters already been out there whether it's joker or if he was a character kind of prototype going into joker maybe penguin could have had a, a smile attempted to be cut into his face but once again that's going into theory territory that's not what this video is but it's great to hear how colin farrell is the penguin we all knew that he would be i love this next one by the way i absolutely adore it so another update tweet robert pattinson's batman is the world's greatest detective he is so smart the police hate him he outsmarts everyone and gotham pd literally need him to snatch the riddler's ass up and Oh, I love that. I love that the fact that you have, I mean, you can gauge it already from the trailer when he's walking in with potentially Captain James Gordon bringing him onto the crime scene of the mayor's death. And you have all these cops and there's, like, I believe, FBI agents or whatever there and just looking at him. And I find that in of itself very fascinating. I've gone into this in other videos and how they're actually allowing a legal vigilante who takes the law in, into his own hands to step onto the scene of a crime. Like, they're breaking their own freaking rules. Like the law, they're allowing a vigilante to be a consultant almost. Like, it's crazy. So they must be pissed in of, them, in of itself that they're letting somebody who's a vigilante do their own work. That's just, it's incomprehensible to me. I mean, it isn't with James, uh, Jim and, and, and Bruce being Batman and that duo of consulting each other over certain cases throughout the, the decades they do that. But, oh man, just hearing that the freaking Gotham PD can't stand this guy. And then you put that into the scenes where he's like struggling as he's kind of being restrained by all these officers in that interrogation room. Uh, maybe he just woke up after that explosion. But then you might be thinking, why didn't they demask him? There's all kinds of, uh, kinds of theories. But the main takeaway about me going, on too many tangents there because i can literally spider webs keep darting up in all different locations when i get into this um yeah yes he is the world's greatest detective and that's one of the biggest um i would say components and i would say crucial aspects that matt reeves wanted to highlight in this movie especially through what he's articulated before and up next guys oh alfred and bruce now this was music to my ears and also um didn't necessarily catch me off guard but it's, it's bloody fascinating so update how is the relationship between bruce and andy circus's alfred their relationship is warm it's not that alfred doesn't want batman to fight he he, he just has a he has a bunch of things needs Bruce to do like attend meetings etc. Bruce is never home and refuses to show up. So that is once again I think uh, quintessential Alfred and Bruce, and it's good to hear that. And, and he, he says he's warm, so that I feel like if they would have done Earth One, like we've been speculating about, maybe a bit of um, you know loving relationship for sure, but maybe a bit more tough, lovey Alfred. That doesn't seem to be the case because I feel like this test screening guy who Blu-ray Angel knows would have mentioned that there may have been a bit of friction or something between Alfred and Bruce, despite him still being warm, despite there being that relationship there that we all know and love. I thought if that was going to happen in the movie, he would have definitely said it. So the fact that he hasn't said there was, I mean, maybe 
it could still happen. But the fact that he didn't detail that and he just says that the relationship is warm. So, you know, Andy Serkis is Alfred. I, I've, I've completely dialed it now in my head. He, it's, he, he, it's not that like he doesn't want Bruce or Batman to go out and fight. You know, he believes in it by the sounds of that. It's just like, I think he's trying to, you know, as Alfred does, like, he believes in the fight, but he's like, he doesn't want the Bruce to go, even though, you know, there's a bit of always a debate between the mask and the man, right? I think Alfred is always advocating for both sides. So I think Alfred is, much as he's trying to, you know, uh, completely approve of Bruce, he's like, yeah, but Bruce, you know, got this with Wayne Enterprises, and, you know, and then, then there's Bruce, who's like, never home, refuses to show up, and that kind of paints Alfred's, and Andy Serkis' Alfred in a light of where I kind of feel sorry for him. Maybe he's in Wayne Manor kind of thinking, is Bruce going to be home? And it also further emphasizes my theories of what if when Batman came back from training and stuff, and we know he's one year, six months in, into year two. So one year, six months in, that he never went out in public. And he was just in the cave the whole time. And whenever he went out, it was in the Batman armor up until the events of the movie when he does finally come out of Bruce. Like, that could be completely wrong, by the way. It's just fascinating when I hear Bruce is never home and refuses to show up to, to certain things. It just makes me think and, and reinvigorates my conviction with what I've said before uh, with how right now this part of his career and it's been a very re relevant point raised by many fans it's like oh he doesn't seem to have not necessarily mastered the, du the duality of bruce wayne from the what we've seen in the trailer it's like he's just always in batman mode and that's the thing with one year six months in this bruce and batman hasn't learned that he needs to also be bruce as well and hearing that bruce is never home and refuses to show up and it's not like alfred doesn't want batman to fight as a bunch of things that he needs bruce to do attend meetings and stuff but bruce you know is never home and refuses to show up well that shows me constantly in Batman, constantly doing the criminological experiment, not getting the results he wants. So, and these are quotes from Matt Reeves, that further pushes him to be Batman even more and get those results he wants, all the while neglecting the other things that Alfred is trying to be like, Bruce, like, Bruce, like, come on, look, I know you're doing that thing, but Bruce, <laughs> you know. So, ah, oh, I love that, love that. Mwah. What I, you know, it, it lines up perfectly, really, really does. Now up next, update, I got this answer. How does Paul Dano compare to Heath Ledger's The Joker? Um, you know, comparison, you know, you could say it's unnecessary, but it's like, why not? You know, we've had a great villainous performance with The Dark Knight, you know, with The Joker of Heath Ledger's. So what about Paul motherfrickin' Dano, an exceptional talent, talent in of himself, uh, as I always say, um, check out something like Prisoners if you haven't already. What is wrong with you? It's got Hugh Jackman, Paul Dano, a bunch of other people, but watch it. It's, it's great. So, Heath was a lunatic in a very extroverted way. The Riddler is very angry at the world for not being lo loved with too much knowledge. I'm not saying, uh, maybe that's meant to be a different word, not being loved with too much knowledge. Maybe he's meant to say like not, regardless though, like, so the Riddler is very angry at the world for not being loved with too much knowledge. He streams online, locks himself in, and plans strategic killing. So yeah, I, I, I definitely see Paul Dano's Riddler as like this introvert who um, is definitely, you know, doing with his intellectual mastermind these plans and, and then he goes out and and acts, you know, he, he does them. And also, it, this just falls in line with some of the artwork for the calendars that we've got. You know, I know what I must become. I know what I need to do. Like, the Riddler is definitely being propelled into villainy. Like, you know, a lot of villains are. Like, they don't always view themselves as the villain. And it's not like that, oh, we're meant to sympathize with Arthur Fleck kind of deal here. It's just that a lot of villains, Mr. Freeze, trying to save his wife. So he has to do certain things. You, you see what I mean? There's always kind of a... Uh, you know, is anyone really always, any, you know, bad? <laughs> Joker. But it's, it's always like playing, I like playing with that. And the Riddler, often Gotham turns people into what they are. And the Riddler, from the point of where he's experienced life, he knows what he has to become to change what he feels as an injustice, I guess. It's, it's almost not necessarily two sides of the same coin, like the Batman and Joker thing, but, you know, what they're trying to do with the artwork and several other things you've seen is Batman and Riddler. It's both trying to bring about vengeance and justice, but through two different ways. Riddler streams online, locks himself in, plans strategic killings, is very angry at the world for not being loved with too much knowledge, whatever that means. So, like, I, either way, I think that's going into, if you are justice, please do not lie. No more lies. The mayor lies, lies, lies. So, he has been touched by Gotham cruelty in one way or another, most likely through the very, you know, toxic corruption that is going on that is affecting many people's lives throughout Gotham. It's just that you happen to do it to a guy who's named Edward Nashton, uh, who has a, a, a genius level intellect and he's got to F you up for it. So, uh, 
yet. All right, now the last two updates. I've got more answers, uh, so I can officially say that the Batman will not kill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, it's not a surprise. I've been saying it all along, but a lot of you have as well. He will not kill. However, I have said that I don't, I do expect him to walk that line and have a specific moment like an ego where it's like, you know, he reconciles with almost getting too close, but that further gives him conviction to not ever kill. So that kind of goes off what he's saying here. I can officially say that the Batman will not kill. My friend said, no, he is against killing. There's a scene where they make that very clear. Which, ooh, does this mean that maybe some, like, does this Bruce as Batman stop Selina from, like, I don't know, slitting Falcone's throat with her freaking claw hands? Or does he really want to kill Edward Nashton after maybe uh, somebody who Bruce cares about gets caught in one of the Riddler's explosions or something? And he's just about to kill him with, like, a piece of a pipe or something, but he, he pulls back and he's just like, ah, it's kind of like the Daredevil Wilson Fisk moment. Like, I beat you. Like, I don't think Batman's gonna, it's not gonna be that personal between him and Riddler, but like through the absolute limits Bruce Wayne is pushed to. Like he's been fighting crime, as I've said, thugs, maybe crime families like Falcone and stuff, but to go up against an intellectual person like the Riddler, like, it's gonna push him to his limits. So I think through that effort, he'll want to kind of do it, but he'll pull off and then like, you know, maybe Riddler's gonna be sent to Blackgate or Arkham or someone somewhere else, but you get my point. It could be a scene like that or maybe Batman stops someone like Selina, who maybe might not have as much of an issue with disregarding someone's life in a particular moment in the film. That all yet remains to be seen. But the next scene, so Rob's Batman narrates the whole movie. I'm very, very happy with that. It's been something that has been rumored for a very long, long time. And, and I think that is uh, gonna, oh, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so noir. And that comes in with the noir driven aspects, like hearing Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne narrate the movie. Um, you know, it, it's just gonna be absolutely fantastic. And also the narration, this completely opens doors um, and really gives me a lot of uh, believability now for the Batman ego scenes where he actually talks to maybe the beast that is Batman. If we're getting monologues, sure, it might just straight be straight up commentary of like hearing, hmm, like Batman, I thought this in this scene and the Riddler, blah, blah. But it could also be if we're getting that, well then why not go one step further and maybe have a scene where he actually talks to the duality of himself and with how much Bat Reeves has gone on uh, about Batman ego oh that could be brilliant and you know we know there's drops in this movie the drops the drug that is the drops maybe somehow he gets hit with that and that brings out that even more but moving onwards fight scenes were great lots of them the Catwoman ones were my absolute fave oh so Zoe really pops off I was pretty surprised he says so the, the, the guy came out the test screening saying the ones that stood out to win most were the Catwoman ones, which isn't actually necessarily surprising, especially with how flippy-whippy acrobatic-y uh, Catwoman is. Alfred has significant scenes. So, we were discussing earlier with maybe not so rough and gruff, tough love scenes between Bruce and Alfred, but I still expect those scenes. Something similar to uh, maybe like Telltale Batman. I tweeted this out the other day. Somebody else tweeted out that scene from Telltale Batman where Bruce gets out the, uh, the Batmobile, goes in there, and it's after he learned about the Wayne corruption. And he's like, Alfred, what haven't you been telling me? Alfred! Like, could there be a moment in this where Bruce, you know, you're a part of this too. How am I a part of this? You'll see. Like, and he confronts Alfred, but Alfred's like a really nice guy who's been poised up to be this like Andy Serkis kind of soft, caring, warm Alfred. But like, in that moment, just like Telltale, where that Alfred seems really nice and, you know, Alfred-y. He's like, he's like, oh, shit. Bruce, I, uh, you know, he has to tell him, like, he's been keeping it from him, from his own protection, but could there be scenes with that much chemistry and acting chops? Well, even if it's not that, there's gonna be stuff akin to this, I'm sure. There's blood, teetering between thriller and ho horror, and I think that just about wraps it up. I do apologize if I didn't get every single last tweet, it's just that Blu-ray Angel's time feed time feed timeline on Twitter he's been retweeting a lot of things so me trying to find every like appropriate post was kind of hard to do but like I think I got every single one of them and this is absolute music to my ears guys as I'm sure it is yours it's just stuff that it's kind of weird to experience it's like things that 
Because having such a vision in your mind that I, you know, I'm not trying to blow smoke in my own ass. I just really do feel like if me and Reese were in a room, we would be really like bouncing off each other. Like, I, w I feel like I would vibe his vision and that's why I enjoy talking about this so much. So hearing, um, you know, somebody that uh, Blu-ray Angel trusts come out of a test screening, just reaffirming a lot of what we already know, plus throwing in a few interesting curveballs that are good curveballs because it's like, oh, okay. I thought it would kind of go that way, but it, now it's kind of deviated in the sense that, oh, I didn't kind of consider that, and that is brilliant. It's only actually furthering the vibe and vision I had towards Matt Reeves's vision, hearing these test screen responses and feedback and, you know, just, um, you know, your first impression. Oh man, just Bruce narration, it, you know, reminds me of like year one when he's just walking down the street and then it's just like Bruce, oh, can you imagine it? Like Bruce Wayne, I and mean, we've already heard that there's a scene from Cinema Con where he's walking down the street just like in year one and you're probably seeing on screen right freaking now and that's the kind of commentary you can expect from Robert Pattinson's Bruce. And you can just see in your head, he's looking around his city. What does it become? The whole reason he's propelled into being Batman and ah, oh, this is all too good. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think of this? Um, I, I, I'm dying to hear it. This is our first like tangible shite we're getting of the Batman in quite some time other than the CinemaCon stuff, but before DC Fandom, before, in where we're going to get a massive dose, an absolute monumental landmark type dose for the Batman, and I can't wait for that, but big shout out to Blu-ray Angel here, thanks for feeding the Bat family, because, you know, I, I trust you, I really do, I trust that your friend, you know, I, I endorse you, and, and I'm, I'm assuming this is all true, so thank you for giving this to us, because it's the stuff we needed to go follow Blu-ray Angel on Twitter, guys, um, you did us all a big favor here, and, uh, it was a great time reacting to it all, as, as a very, very big fellow Batman fan myself. So guys, like this video if you did enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe to never miss out on any big ass Batman updates like this. You know this is the channel to be for that. And other than that, in my top pinned comment, I do have places you can follow me, such as Twitter, my Discord server. I very much so encourage you to follow me on Twitter. And lastly, as always, if you got to this part of the video, to prove that you got this far and everything good like that, you guys know how it goes by now. Uh, down in the comments with whatever you've got to post, type a hashtag, definitive. Batman because you know it's going to be and other than that ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you bat family in the next video goodbye